Okay guys, so I've added in some extra percussion parts and it's nothing that you haven't already seen or learnt but it's just to fill out the techno tracks arrangement a little bit more and get a bit more in the frequency spectrum. So you've already seen the off hat and the shaker. I'll just play you what the rest of it sounds like. And you can see I've made use of things such as the track delays here and here and the panning to give it a bit more of a width. So starting from over here, we've got our off hat. We've then got our long hat. Long hat two. Reverb hat with a bit of sidechain compression. We've then got some groups and we've got one which is just a simpler. Here I've just added a bit of random velocity to my input MIDI. We've got our shaker and then we've got a ride on the end here. And if we have a look at these, what I've done, you can see I've panned these two left and right and the reason I've added that random velocity is so there's a difference between the left and the right even though the MIDI is the same and then I've panned them and added a tiny bit of delay as well just to give it the harsh effect so it's nice and wide. If we look at some of these, some of them are just elongated single notes. Some of them I've added the groove and it's just a quantized set of notes with the groove applied and the velocity. And then other ones are pretty random. And you can see it's different all the way through, but it's nothing you haven't already seen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding an arpeggiator. You can also see I've used some send and returns as well. And all they are is some reverb and delay. So let's insert a MIDI track. We'll colour code it and rename it Arpeggiator. You can see we've got a sample manager already on here and we can go up here, type in ARP and you see we get the Arpeggiator tag or we could even search that as well or look into some of these. And then to play them we just have to click them. Remember we've got our different MIDI modes here. And if we want to turn preview off because these are now quite long loops, we can do that in the settings just by clicking the autoplay samples button. But for now we'll leave it on. And if we have a look at some of these, you'll see that this here says it's a one shot. But if we play it, it's actually not a one shot, it's a loop. So we can change that by clicking type, change to loop. And if we find that there's multiple sounds like that, so this one, we can use command or shift if they're next to each other. And you can see we've selected these on the side. We can just say type, loop. And it's now changed all of those to a loop and then we can just unselect them. And if we click on here, we can just use the arrow keys jump through which is a bit quicker and remember if you want to remember the shortcuts you just go to edit shortcuts here and then you can have a read of these or change them if you want so I quite like the sound of this one and what we're going to do is now have a look at the functions down here so if we play this via MIDI we can hear how we can play it up and down the keyboard but it's always going to play at 127 which is the tempo of this project so let's listen with drums mode So you can really hear the difference between smooth and drums there.
drums is a lot more choppy. So I'll leave it on normal for this. And then we have the playback. So I do quite like synths and arpeggiators when you reverse them. And if we play this in time with the project, I can just hit this in time. So let's just play the project. Or ping pong. So you can hear that it's always playing in time with the project, but if we take door sync off, it's going to act more like a typical sample in an old school sampler where if you speed up the tempo or the actual speed of the sample then it's going to change the pitch so if I play it higher up you can hear it's fast and high pitch and if I play it lower down it's very slow and very deep but you do tend to find you get quite a clean sounding sample when you do this so sometimes it is preferred to not actually mess with the timing of the sample and keep it natural like this but then you do have to remember that it's not actually going to play in time with your project tempo unless you choose the exact right pitch on your keyboard to make it play back in time which could cause it to not be in pitch so I'm going to keep that turned on and other things we could do if we go on here we could just paint in some notes So that doesn't actually sound too bad. We could get an auto filter on that and maybe some echo. Or we could play something in ourselves, but, but what I like to do when I want to get creative is I use something from Max for Live called the Mono Sequencer, which is a Max MIDI effect. So we can put the Mono Sequencer here. It's great for techno because you can do lots of randomization with it or controlled randomization. So we'll just set it up so it's locked to the transport and you can literally just hit randomize a few times conform it to a scale so we'll go for C Aeolian which is C minor you can see it's randomized it by 25% we can randomize the velocity we can randomize the octaves we can randomize the duration so we listen to it now go to a fresh pattern So skip notes down here, so it's going to miss these out. So that is the mono sequencer to generate ideas, which you could then resample. But in this case, because I actually do like the sound of this exactly as it is, what we're going to do is just find an appropriate note. We'll hit legato. We'll play that. Make sure we've got door sync on. And then we can choose which mode we want to use. We can use forward, normal, and stop.
in this video we looked at adding an arpeggiator to our project and then we then looked at the DAW sync and how we can use it when it's out of sync as well as some different playback modes and way of actually playing the arpeggiator in using things such as the mono sequencer. Next we'll add a synth and then we can come back to this later on and add some automation with the filters.